good morning. Just checking the solar panel. It's uh, day two on the big boat with little boat trips. <laughs> it's uh, sunrise. We're in a beautiful bay. Have a look. Sun's just just starting to hit those mountains. Had a great day yesterday. Um, let's see. We had oysters, Kilpatrick, stir fried mud crab, and plenty of fish. Last night it blew up, um, which was with the forecast. Yesterday was beautiful. Um, 15 to 20. Five knot forecast. See what happens today. Bowl of chai. <laughs> mm. Yesterday took me quite a while to get going because yeah, I had issues with the outboard. Set the solar up. Got a new sponsor on the channel. If in case you didn't watch last video, the new sponsor is iTech World, and they do really good batteries and these are fuses. This is a solar controller. Yesterday at this time that was 12.9. If you want quality lithium batteries. I've had two in my other boat for, oh, I don't know, close to two years now, and they're great. They charge a lot faster than normal batteries. They're, they're more efficient. Um, normal batteries have an internal resistance that, that actually drains them over time, whereas these things, you can leave them sit for a year, and they're still pretty good. I, I don't recommend leaving them for a year. You should, should top them up every now and then. One of the first things we've got to do this morning is check the crab pots. Then I'm also gonna hit a couple of spots that I um, missed time yesterday. The tide was already too low. And then if around lunchtime, the tide's low and the wind is not too strong, we'll use these lures here and try for a massive cod, like literally, you know, meter long. That's the game plan. Fingers crossed the wind stays down. Starting to think I should call these mini boat adventures because I spend a lot more time in the, the big duck than I do in the big boat. But yeah, anyway. Hopefully, yeah, the big boat gets me to places that I can't get to in my normal boat and then I explore in this thing here. I do want to go to the reef and that was gonna be my next trip, but yeah, with a with a forecast of 15 to 25 knots, it's just not gonna happen. Yesterday I had the crab pots a fair bit further out, but today I've, well last night, I moved them a little bit closer, because I did get a nice crab. Uh, not too deep. What have we got? Nothing at all. Uh, let's hope we get something today. And nothing. Come on, Krabby. Nope, nothing. Oh, nothing. So yesterday I was fishing the 6 inch atomic plazos with a ball sinker on. And I'm just going to cut that off because I want to skip it in as far as I can in the mangroves here. That's where the mangrove jack are hiding. Nice and weedless. We'll actually tuck that in a little bit. So when I, when I get a fish hitting, I've really got to yank on it to drive that hook into his jaw. Oof, nice tight drag, that'll do. Alrighty. I'm stealth paddling in. That way they don't hear me. And yeah, I can actually feel and hear the wind blowing pretty hard already. So we'll see how long we can do this for. There's a couple little creeks around here, not, not many. Um, looks like a little channel through here. Okay, first cast of the day, let's see. Yeah, there we go. And if I tuck in really close like this to the mangroves, if, if it's windy, it's um, still very fishable. Oh, little trevally, come on. On our brim. Three of them. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I've never had this before. I've got an SD card error. Look at that. SD card error. Damn it. I hope I haven't lost yesterday's footage and today's footage. That is terrible. I've never ever had an SD card die on me. This is the first one and it's the biggest one I own. It's a 512 gigabyte. It's not good. A lot of footage. A lot of footage. I don't like to swear on camera, but 
I've lost some big fish, some crab, oysters, and even even new sponsor. I yeah, and it's been a long time since I've made a video. To have that uh, that card crash on me, yeah, it doesn't make me happy at all. Anyway, I'm going to try not to let it bother me today, and we'll do some catch-up footage, I guess. <laughs> Yesterday was such a beautiful, calm day. Today's 25 knots. Oh. Oh, I'm back on the big boat. I'm actually hoping it's the camera that's bugged, not the not the SD card. Because that's a whole day of, well, a day and a bit of filming that I just can't get back. Oh, let's, let's see if I've got another, another SD card and just, just keep going. Oh, the big jacks, the cod, the crab, the cooking, the adventure. It could be all gone. What a pain. Oh, there you go. You can see that green symbol on the, um, the left-hand top side. That means this SD card works and the other SD card is rooted. Oh, I really hope I can retrieve some of that, that footage. What a pain in the rectum hole. I guess we try again. That is so annoying. Oh, it's my biggest card and it's got, got some amazing footage on it. I do hope I can retrieve it. I'm stealth paddling around the mangroves. Works pretty well actually. Um, yeah, I like it. This is much quieter than using an electric motor. And it doesn't scare the fish at all. Look at that, we can get really close. You'll see I'm really hugging the mangroves because the wind's already started blowing. If I stay in the lee side of the mangrove, I should be able to fish while it's windy. You can hear that, that wind already starting to come over the top. Let's try up this little creek. I got stuck in here yesterday. Um, I don't want to stay that long today, but I know there's a couple of fish in here, so let's get them. Oh, <laughs> little trevally. Oh, first strike of the morning. Actually gave me a fright. Ooh, that was good. Oh, we got some brim following. Come on, brimmies, how'd you come? Here they are, right next to the boat. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, had a look. Got him, yes. Oh. That is a big cod. I'm calling it. Oh, that's a big cod. I'm calling it. Yep, there it is. Oh, he's not as big as yesterday. But he's not a bad one. <laughs> oh, nice black spot. I think we might keep this guy. He'll be legal for sure. Come on in, buddy. Yep, he'll make it good. Good lunch today. He is 44 centimeters. Hey, Mr. Cod. Oh, I actually saw a swirl on that snag, the cast before. And I didn't say anything because I wasn't 100% sure. And the only reason I reckon I got this guy is because I let it sink down uh, nice and slow. And then he, he snaffled it on the drop. Get a glamour shot of this guy. First fish of the day. Beautiful, hey? <laughs> oh, we're gonna keep him. Um, I'm still hoping for mangrove jack on top water at some point today. Um, I wanna, I've got uh, really nice ingredients for sushi. So we're gonna do that, hopefully for lunch. That's, that's the plan. 
But yeah, look at this guy. Ooh. <laughs> I've just got him hanging off the side of the boat, cut his throat, and bleeding him out. Hopefully, yeah, no sharks come and find him there. They're usually pretty wary of boats, but yeah, it's a little, little dangerous in a inflatable dinghy. Okay, let's sneak back in there. Got him, yes. Oh, another cord. And again on the drop. Oh. I am the cod king. Get out of there so we don't wreck any more spots. Oh, he's a very dark one. Very dark cod. Yeah, very dark black spot cod. He's um, probably... Yeah, just under legal, 36, maybe 37, hey? Off you go. See ya. And you're good? Yep, he's dead. Water's actually nice and cool, so... That'll keep him preserved till we get back to the boat. So I'm just fishing the edge here. And because I've got no weight on it, I'm just letting it drift down slowly. And that's actually when they're... They're whacking it is on that that slow slow sink, which I'm guessing looks pretty natural. Except for that spinning there, looks like it's okay. Yeah, oh, that's a good hit. Oh yeah. Oh, he's got me under. Oh, that's a big. Oh, I don't know, jack or cod, but he's he's definitely under something there. Oh, it might be out. No. Oh, he's gone back under. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Okay, he's out. He's out. Oh, come back. Come back. Oh, nice cord. Nice cord. I've got to get out of here. I don't want to wreck this edge. We actually fished all the way up on that side, and now we're fishing back on this side. Oh, get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. So I've still got another, I don't know, 40, 50 metres here to do. And I don't want to wreck it by banging the boat in there. Oh, this is a big cod. Looks like he's got rid of my plastic for me. It might be floating here somewhere. There it is. <laughs> we'll pick that up later. Yeah, there's the plastic. Oh yeah, this is the one. This is similar to the big one I got yesterday that I didn't measure the length of. Oh, get, oh yeah, look at that. Big bucket mouth. I have to, I have to use the jaw lock grip hold he is exactly 50 centimeters there you go big big cod and you can see where he um went into the snag there he scraped himself a little bit oh beautiful fish i get a quick glamour shot with you the one yesterday i reckon was a little bit bigger than this one he would have gone maybe 52 or three or maybe even four you know but yeah beautiful creature big gob on him I'm going to let him go. I've got one for sushi. Wouldn't mind a mangrove jack. They actually have firmer meat than cods. Cods um, have very soft meat, very much like coral trout. Please don't splash the camera too much. I'll put him all the way in the water and then he should just... There we go. Beautiful. Oh! How good is that? I am the cod king. <laughs> I actually saw some mangrove jack swimming off from where I cast before and they just didn't go for it. They were actually buffing and biting and eating stuff um, probably about 10 o'clock last night. No, sorry, I went to bed at 8.30. So it would have been 8 o'clock last night. So yeah, I wasn't going fishing at 8 last night. It was very cold. Anyway, um, still want to get that jack. Almost forgot. This is what he vomited up. That is, I'm pretty sure it's a... Stone crab, Xanthidae species, toxic to um, humans, but obviously, and that, that one there, that could be a, I don't know, um, different different sort of crab, that one. One of the cods I caught yesterday, he had a puffer fish in his in his throat, so it's, they can obviously handle toxic animals. Oh, and here's that plastic he, he stole off me. Uh. It'll be all torn out at the front, so I have to put a new one on. Um, shall I change colour? I might change colour. These are the Atomic Plazos Jerk Minnow. I reckon we'll try one of these. 
I didn't actually fish one of those um, yesterday, but the water's clear enough that, yeah, that looks like a, like a prawn. It is the Ghost Orange 6 inch, and it may take a little longer to get down, but I'm, I'm going to continue fishing it weightless. Um, the weight of the hook is enough to, to pull it down, because I think it just it looks very natural, like a very slow sinking fish. Beautiful, nice and weedless, straight, and oh, lovely colour. <laughs> I wish I could remember where I've already fished, but yeah, mangroves all look the same. Unless there's a big tree sticking out. I haven't got to that big tree yet. I reckon there'd be one big cod every five meters or so. Because they like to ambush their prey. That's just my theory. I'm just making it up as I go along. Oh, that was a fish. I was just winding it in because I'd given up on that. Let's try him again. It was very half-hearted. Sort of hit. He sort of just went, eh, and then let go of it. Let's try again, same spot. Yeah, a little too far out, but that'll do it. Yep, got him. Oh, oh, I dropped him. Yeah, hook didn't come out and penetrate his mouth. He will probably not be back. But, oh, he might have stirred something else up. Usually they get upset and salt. Yes! Oh, that's a good one. He's in there. He's in there. Oh, he's dragging me further and further in. Oh, here he is, here he is, got him. Oh, another black spot caught. Decent one too. Oh, I am the God King. Oh, yeah, he would go close to 40. Yep, he'd be 40. So let's see if we can let you go without spiking me. There we go. That's the Andy's patented jaw hold. Hey, okay, black spot. Yeah, about 40. Hey, off you go, buddy. Do a flip. One more go in there and then we'll go somewhere else, I reckon. That wind is really blowing me around. Look at the boat, she's ripping. Yeah, got him. That was a very gentle take. Oh, is he swimming? Oh, flathead. <laughs> oh, I got a nice flathead. Oh, I dropped him. Sand flathead. That's cool. Must have been right near the bottom there. There you go. Ha. He would have thought that's a tasty prawn. Hmm. Check out the turtle. I, I literally just went over him. There he is, just hanging out in the little creek. There's actually quite a few in here. Oh, we're getting a bit shallow too. Bye, Mr. Turtle. Hmm, let's see. Oh, tarpon. Let's have a go at tarpon. It's about 20 or so. Yeah, they're a bit spooky in this shallow water. Very spooky tarpon. I don't think I'd hook them on this lure anyway. Oh, had a hit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, something else going on over here. Oh, there's a little jack. Two jacks. Oh, it's going off. Tide's getting low, and it's going off. Had a looker. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, they're a bit spooky now. I've had too many casts in there. You really need to get them on the first or second cast. And I'm stuck. Ah, uh, bugger. Okay, we got it. I'll try a little bit more up here. Ooh, looks like tarpon's sitting up there. Ooh, yep. hundred tarpon or more. Ooh, I can hear him. Got him, yes. That's a big jack. Oh, oh. oh he's got me around. Oh, no. Oh, I heard a jack and I caught a cord. How does that work? Greedy, greedy cord. <sighs> hey, 
You were supposed to be a mangrove jack. Another nice black spot, it'd go, yeah, 40, 42 maybe, hey? Beautiful fish, off you go. There he goes. Let's see if we can pull that jack out. That was a big, big jack. He definitely buffed. Um, don't know if it was on my lure, but we'll find out, won't we? I'm sure there's a mangrove jack with my name on it up this creek. I'm very sure of that. Ooh, I see a bunch of fish on the end of that mangrove. Perfect, skipped it right through them. Oh, I've got a looker. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, we had a looker. Oh, another looker. Oh, oh big jack, big jack. Oh. Yes. Ah, he's a good jack. He's not, not a huge jack. Oh, <laughs> he actually ate it and I didn't know I had him on. Oh, I reckon we'll get some more in that, that spot. That's a good looking spot. Let's get a measurement on this guy. I reckon he could be legal. Come on, Mr. J. Oh, he's only just lip hooked there. Yes, he is 39. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, we're gonna take you as well. Nice mangrove jack. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be lunch, I reckon. Sushi mangrove jack. These actually have a much firmer meat than the uh, the cods do, and that's that's why I prefer these for for sushi. <laughs> ah, beautiful. <sighs> nice. Oh, look at the fangs on him. Big, vicious fangs. Really nice. Just want to show you the rod I'm using. It's Atomic Arrows. Uh, it's actually an offshore, but a seven foot long. It lets me flick the lures in this creek. And that's, a, I think it's a 4,000 size reel. No, 5,000 size reel, that one. Well, it took me about three hours to find the fish today. And now that I've found them, I'm not leaving them, even if I get stuck. I, I definitely will get stuck. It's already a bit shallow now. It is actually quite windy. See that moving there? That's actually only a little teeny bit of wind. Oh, that one's terrible. That one's way in there. And we're stuck. No. I'm not sure I'm going to get this lure out. It's uh, way in here. It's, it's gone through here. I'm going to pass my rod almost in the water. Oh, come on. And then... Somehow, oh man, I don't really want to climb in that tree either. She's um, she's already a bit. How you going? Okay, the things that I do to get a lure back. This is a oh, oh, it's a dead mangrove, but I can see my lure just here. Oh, oh I'm holding the boat with my foot. Oh. 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 Let's hope it doesn't get stuck again. That was a mission. Who likes fishing mangroves? There's a massive log. It's, it's like a tree laying there. We'll just systematically fish it. Start at the back. Go to the middle. Oh, barramundi! Oh, there was two of them, and I was too slow on the strike. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> oh, I missed him. That was a good fish. Oh, way in there. Come on. Oh, just had a little one miss it. Got him, yes. Oh, something just grabbed it. I don't think we're going to get much further in the boat. Um, that tree's blocking the creek, so I think what we'll do is we might go for a little wander. I don't know how far we're going to get, but we'll give it a shot. I do like exploring, and a little creek like this is ideal. I want my shoes on and in full drive. <sighs> yeah, I reckon, yep, this will work perfectly. don't know how far we're going to get or what we're going to find. But we're going to find out. Oh, that should stop.
stay there. Always be crockwise when you do this. Oh, little puffer fish. Uh, yeah, just don't ever just do what I do. Um, know that you're safe. I'm always very wary. I'm always looking around, make sure there's no crocs sunning themselves that I walk in front of to block their exit to the salt water. I reckon we should get a fish in here. This looks like a good spot in here. Oh yeah, oh, and there was a fish. I just spooked him, I saw his bow wave. Oh, we got a looker. Didn't want it. There's a bow wave from the left and a bow wave from the right. Ooh. Cod, Jack, and Brim. All three. Oh, I'll try it again. Oh, Jack just had a look. Come on. Eat it. You know you want it. Oh, I think we're going to... I think they're spooked now. That's cool. Oh, I got him. Got him, got him. Oh, no, he's got me. Oh, jeez. That is going around a lot of stuff. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to get him out. Oh, he's just destroyed me. Yep. He has destroyed me. I don't even know if I can get in there. That was a good fish. Oh. And that is way too deep for me to walk in. That's probably chest height in there. I think we've lost him. Damn it. Oh, hang on, hang on. He just moved. He just moved. Yep, he's coming out. I just have to do it nice and gentle. He took a lot of line. Oh, there he is, there he is. I don't know what he is yet. Took a lot of line. Oh, it is a mangrove jack. Oh, and it's a cracker. Oh, I got him. I got him. Oh, there's another one following him. Oh, it's a cod following him. Oh, and the cod just ate the lure. <laughs> and there's four or five more. Oh, let's deal with this guy down here. Oh, so lucky to get this guy. <laughs> That is the biggest jack of the trip so far. Monster. He'd go close to 50. Oh, we're going to have to measure this guy. Yeah, I reckon he's he's 50. Or just under. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it oh, paid off, didn't it? Walking up the creek with a monster mangrove jack. Oh, oh he is... One heck of a fish. Beautiful. Oh, I wonder if that's going to be my um, thumbnail. <laughs> what a cracker. Wow. He'd be very close to 50. He is just under 48. What a stonking fish. Hey, I'm going to let this guy go. I just want to get a, a glamour shot with him first. That hook's still in there. Just. Oh, that almost came out. I'll just leave it there for the moment. I like to keep the fish in the water whilst I get the cameras ready. Or on a wet mat. That's actually, yeah, quite wet that spot now. What a beautiful fish. I'm having a bit of a shit of a trip. First, I lose a card, and now my camera, my head camera, fell in the water. Oh, beautiful mangrove jack. Try and get him to... There we go. <laughs> 48 centimetres. Oh, beautiful. I'll let him go. Can't believe I just dropped my camera in the water. I'm going to have to dry it off, and hopefully it's not dead. This camera's waterproof, the other one's not. Ah, lost footage, possible destroyed camera. I don't know, <laughs> I really don't know anymore. Uh, I'm gonna keep walking up there, maybe catch another fish. Take a bit of a snack with me and a couple of extra lures. The only reason that I can cast in the, um, the area where I got that jack is because these atomic, um, jerk minnows they're completely weedless and they, they skip right in there i've been mucking around with this camera for a little while and it is playing up so 
I don't know. I may have two episodes that are completely bugging and a, and a bad camera. But while we can, we're gonna cast in here and have another go. Well, it's official. My head camera has died. It lasted like, I don't know, 30 seconds. And now it's, now it's just not even turning on. So I'll leave you here for a second. I'll have a couple more casts, but then I think that's it for the fishing today. It's um, not ideal at all. Oh, there's a mangrove jack. Come on, come on. Nah, they're all running away from the lure now. Oh, I had a couple swipes. One actually tried to bite it. I'm gonna look further up the creek, but I don't know how filming's gonna go. Okay, we're gonna try a chest mount. It's probably gonna be really wobbly and I don't, I don't, oh shit, I'm slippery there. I have no idea what I'm filming, but we'll give it a go for a little bit. Yep, got him. Oh, even this little water hole, we find a cord. Hey, little guy. There he is. Hey, off you go, buddy. There he goes. Looks like we've run out of water here. We're gonna keep pushing up a little bit and see if there's any water holes further up, but um, it kind of feels like this is the extent of where the salt water goes. I do like exploring. We'll see what this creek turns into. The river actually opens up again, but yeah, it's all really shallow. There's no big deep pools. And when it rains, like the water comes from the top of that mountain up there. So we'll go a little bit further. Hopefully don't find too many snakes here. This actually looks like a really violent creek. I'm just walking on lots of big rocks and have a look at this. It just, it must just shift big rocks whenever it floods and just smash away the, the side of the creek. But so far, I'm probably about a half a K up. There is no sign of any water holes. So I'm thinking this is just a, like a, yeah, fast, fast water runoff creek. Check this out, I found some water. That'll be fresh water. It doesn't doesn't look very drinkable, but there is potential. I've gone about a kilometre now. I didn't bring any extra food or drink or anything. I'm I'm not drinking that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I might have to come back here for an explore one day. Let me know in the comments if I should or not. Oh. But there is fresh water here. At least the dinghy's still here. Oh, well, it can't actually go anywhere because we are definitely stuck in this creek. It will be very dry. This this here hasn't dropped since I caught the fish, which means it's been dropping out there. Hmm. I think we've got a challenge ahead of us. Can you see it? That's where I need to go. It's all dry. These guys are stuck in here just as much as I am. Hey, turtle. So I've got a choice to make. Do I take everything out of the dinghy and then including the dinghy carry it what looks like close to 200 meters? I mean I have got wheels on the dinghy but I don't think they're going to work on this stuff here. Oh, it's, uh, the motor weighs, I don't know, like 50 something kilos. The fuel tank's probably 20 plus. Uh, fishing gear is another 20 kilos or no 15, 10, 10 to 15 kilos um, what else I don't know I'm sure there's something else Oh, cameras I've got a camera box in there so it's gonna be I don't know how many trips at least seven or eight trips maybe maybe more and I can't just go into that first water hole I've got to go all the way to the ocean uh, now it's gonna take at least three or four hours for that tide to come in so I don't know I'm not excited about any of it while I contemplate my fate and options at the moment I've got a at least a nice healthy looking carrot big fat carrot have a bit of a munch on so yeah cucumber carrot it's the only solid food I've had today mm. so 
So I'll run out of energy at some point. I'm just checking out the terrain. I really don't think the boat will, um, the wheels will work over this stuff. So I've literally got to carry everything, including the boat. Let's check this canal out and see if we can do like two portages instead of one really long one. I did get myself into this. I, I knew I would, I would um, get stuck in here, but yeah, when the camera failed, I don't know, might have lost the plot a little bit. Here we go, this is like a little canal here. There's a good possibility I can drop the, oh shit, that's slippery as. That is just mud and slipperiness there. So let me turn the around again. Yeah, I can drop the dinghy in here. Put, hopefully put most of the, oh, this is slippery. Put most of the weight back in. Um, and then float it, I don't know, maybe 40 meters or something. It's just not ideal at all. Just gonna sit here for a little while and see where the tide's going in or out. Very shallow. And I've picked a little bit of ground here to see where the tide's going up, going down, and then make a decision, because yeah, carrying all that stuff is gonna be extremely hard. If the tide's already coming in, then I think I might just wait. I think I might have got a little bit too confident with that dinghy being light and agile and shallow draft. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not in any danger or anything like that. I don't, there's no crocodiles, you know, I've got plenty of time. It's just a bit of an inconvenience. So, we'll see. Hmm, can't tell. I'll get back to you in, I don't know, five or ten minutes when I've got an idea of what the tide's doing. I, I don't have a watch with me. So I don't quite know what it is. Okay, I've confirmed it. The tide is still dropping. It's going to be a long wait. Ah, oh. man, what do I do? After much walking around, umming and ahhing, I've decided to do a portage. Decided to do it in stages, so it's not overwhelming, but it's going to be an effort. It sort of works, it's just really hard and slow. If I'm really careful, I go slow and then every time I get stuck, I have to lift it up but the wheels are actually taking half the weight of the boat. So, oh, it's definitely not easy. Oh, but it's better than carrying the whole thing. Oh, I'm stuck. There's a lot of starting and stopping and getting bogged, but the dinghy is down the waterline. And now I've just got to get rid of I carry all the other stuff down. Each one of those deep ruts is me getting bogged and there's probably about 40 of them. In a second, I'll let you know exactly how many meters it is from yeah, one spot to the other spot. Call me ambitious, but I put the anchor down just in case the tide is gonna turn. It's, um, by my reckoning, it still hasn't turned, but it's gotta be like really close. Anyway, I'll let you know how many meters it is from start to finish of this, this thing. 45, 46, 47, 48. That's 248 meters from right here where the boat was stuck to where it is now. Oh, that's a quarter of a kilometer almost. And I'm doing this trip, let's see, once, twice, three, four, five, six. 
Minimum six, maybe seven. <sighs> but not just one way, you gotta go down and come back. So that's 14, that's, that's like two and a half kilometers, something like that. If I get excited later on, I'll put the number here <laughs> to a proper calculation. Oh, and I've still got the heaviest thing to go, the outboard. It's an adventure, and I am capable. I do have the time, but I wish I wasn't doing it. I made it. Oh, that's a heavy thing. I usually think, oh, it's it's nice having a 15, you can just zip around it. But I kind of wish I had a two horsepower. <laughs> Oh, the tide has turned. I'm gonna sit here five, ten minutes, wait for it to float the boat, and then, and yeah, get the crab pots. If I had to stay where I was, it'd be at least another two and a half to three hours, because I'm pretty sure that height is about half tide, and it's just turned, so three hours. Anyway, I made it. I'm happy about that. Can't wait to cook up some lunch. Well, late lunch by the time I get the crab pot. And note to self, time stamp on the video so I can write down here how long it took from when I started to when I finished. Right, quarter of a kilometer portage. Let's hope I don't have to do that again for a while. I'm gonna try and film this as the third pot and I think I've got a crab. Oh, there he is. Got a one arm bandit. Oh, that's so cool. I'll, um, I'll leave him in there. The other crab pot is actually high and dry. So we might go to the boat and sort this guy out and then come back. Just had a look, it's a male and let's see. It's not ideal, but yeah, he's well over. He's about the same size as yesterday's crab. Beautiful. Take him back to the boat, sort him out, and then hopefully there's a bit more um, water where I've got to get that crab pot because it's, yeah, it's high and dry right now. How cool is that though? Woohoo! Two crabs, one each day. That is, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. He's actually a really feisty crab, this one. At least he's only got one claw, so it should make him easier to catch. There we go, we got him. Uh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, I got another mud crab. Get him in the sun a little bit. Look at that. Woo! Beautiful. Dangerous spot here for me. Look at that. Good stuff. I'm actually happy with one mud crab a day. I don't really need another one, but I, I do need to get that pot because I'm I'm gonna leave. Um, I'm gonna cook up first, but yeah. 25 knot winds, dead camera, bugged SD card, just not feeling it. It's pretty shallow, but the pot's underwater, so I should be able to get it. Oh, big shovel nose. Where'd he go? Very shallow. Oh, I don't know what's going on. The boat's actually like touching the mud, but the crab pot's still underwater. Maybe there's a channel there. And I've gone across a shallow bit. Anyway, hopefully it's not collapsed. That would be a, a disaster. And I'm actually thinking it's collapsed. Not gonna catch any crabs like that. Oh, I think it's been like that all day. That's terrible. Oh, we got one crab in there. He's undersized, but that's no good. Huh. Yep, little female crab. I'll be throwing that one back. One cup of sushi rice. A one and a half cups of water. Give a little stir, make sure it's not clumping. Put it on the heat for about 20 minutes. We'll rip a fillet off our fish. I've got a plastic bag. I'm just gonna chuck some panko crumb in there and then just drop the fish straight in there. Make sure a bit of air in there and give it a shake around. Okay, after that, we'll take the air out and really squeeze those panko crumbs under the fish. There we go. Wind is blowing pretty hard, so I've had to put this um, like a wind 
windshade there. Got some olive oil in here. Just get that up to temperature. With this wind, I've had to turn the temperature up a little bit higher than I would normally. So the, um, yeah, the wind's just taking the heat out of my flame. I want these just golden brown. So like three minutes on each side, even two minutes is probably enough. Yeah, perfect. Look at that. And by the time I chop these, the rice will be done. The seeds out. Now this is a chili, but I've taken the seeds out. So we're just going to cut it into little slivers. Just like the colour. This part doesn't have any heat. It just has a little mild chili flavour, which yeah, it's very, very mild. And this time I didn't forget the avocado, although it has been banged around in the boat for the last two days. Oh, it's perfect. A little spot on the side. Two teaspoons of sugar, some salt, and then some rice wine vinegar. About, oh, let's see, a quarter of a cup, a bit less. Let's check the rice. Oh, it looks alright. We'll give that a bit of a fluff and let it cool down. If you're wondering why I'm doing a lot of the prep on the floor here, it's because the sun is, yeah, still really bright and hot. The rice is now super cool, and we're going to put our vinegar, sugar, salt mix in here. I'm not going to use all of it, just see see how that looks. This will make it nice and sticky, and it gives it that um, special sushi rice flavour. POV sushi assembly. Let's see how this works out. I'm aiming for three rolls. Okay, some cucumber, some chili slices. You really don't need more than three or four ingredients in sushi. Some avocado. And a nice piece of fish. In there. There we go. Beautiful. Can we get that rolled in? Oh, that fish actually tastes good. Just lick my fingers. Oh, I think I've gone for too much filling once again. But I think we can handle it. And tuck it in. Oh, missed it. There we go. Tuck it in. Wet my fingers so that the nori sheet sticks. And Finish the roll. That is looking pretty good. Let that rest for a bit. It won't take so long on this one. I'll give you a, the other point of view. And on the last one, I forgot the Kewpie mayo. We gotta have a bit of Kewpie mayo in here. Yeah, this one's I think even fatter than the last one. Can we do it? I think I'm just going to try and flop it over. Oh, we're a little bit big on this one. Here we go, look at this. I'm just tucking it in. And then really doing that. Okay. A little bit of water. Roll over. Here we go. Beautiful. There's another big fat sushi roll. Let's see what sort of job I did on the sushi. Looking pretty good. The sun's going to go down in about 10 or 15 minutes, and I'm having an early dinner. <laughs> Check out that crispy little bit of fish there. I reckon that's going to be my first first taste. This is the one with the Kewpie mayo in it. So, but I I really don't think it needs it with the um, the avocado. Mm. All very delicate flavors. The avocado is probably the most prominent. I've got the crunch of the cucumber. I'll have to try another bit for the chili. Can't, maybe. Yeah, there's, there's no heat whatsoever. It's just a mild sort of capsicum-y flavor. Oh, and that little crumb on the fish adds that umami flavor. <laughs> if I hadn't lost the footage and if my head cam isn't dead or hadn't, hadn't died, I'd probably stay another night, but 
Because it's calmed off again. Have a look. Have a look over, over the side. It's, it's barely 10 knots, if that. So, yeah, I'm going to have to get another camera. This is delicious. You only need a few ingredients to have, yeah, nice sushi on a boat. I'll see you guys next time. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.